Today, we're going to learn how to blend sounds together to make words. Did you know that the brains of good readers are sounding out every sound just very, very fast? No, but I'm a few billion miles out of the loop. It is recent research. Brain research is very powerful, and it shows that your brain is sounding out all the sounds. It has just gotten very fast with practice. When your brain is learning, it will blend words together slower. As you build up your brain with blending practice, soon you'll be able to sound out words with ease. Let's get started. I'm ready. We're going to start out with oral blending to make it easy. That's the first step. We'll learn as we go. G, O, go. G, O, go. W, O, wo. Let's go. That's the W, A, way. Y, A, yay. Young children can take months to learn the skill, but you're a quick study. We'll move on to step two, learning letter names and sounds. I like Leapfrog's Talking Letter Factory DVD for this step. Look at all those stars. It's got over 2,000 reviews and still five stars. That's because that little frog never tires of repeating A says ah. You can also use 40L's vowel and consonant charts to learn. Plus, it has more letter combinations for later use. I know my letter sounds. Here's a few. H, 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 F, F, V, V. The vowels are covered in our Webster video. I'm good to go. That Webster guy was pretty smart. Great. We'll move on to blending then. We'll use these charts for reference. We'll start with some of the easiest letters to blend. Here are some good words to start. M and N are easy to blend, and all vowels are too. And It's easiest to start with two letter words. You can explain that it's like a spring expanding and then getting smaller. M at, m at, mat, as you say the word and the sounds faster and faster. Your student may catch on with just this bit of instruction. Some students pick this up faster than others, but blending is harder than it seems. You'll see why next. Letter sounds said in isolation are not exact representations of how they sound when they are put together in words. In fact, there is a name for the different variations of how letter sounds are made. Linguists call these different sounds allophones. The letter T will sound slightly different in the words top versus stop versus at. So much for your spring theory. Yes, it does break down a bit, but we'll look at some other ways to explain how sounds combine, and hopefully by the end you'll understand. Letter sounds in isolation are actually approximations. They will not exactly match their sound when put back together in words. For example, you cannot say the sound of the letter B, B, in isolation. Even if you think you are, you cannot physically say it without at least a little bit of the vowel sound, typically a short U, uh, at the end of the letter. You may say the uh part very short in duration, but it is there even if you do not hear or feel yourself saying the uh sound at the end of the letter B, B, when you say it sound. I can say B without a vowel sound at the end. But it's physically impossible. But I'm a planetoid. My vocal apparatus is different. Well, you may be able to, but most of my students are human, and it's impossible for them. I feel their pain. It's now impossible for me to be a planet, but at least my non-human status gives me some power. When you blend B with a vowel as a human, it is an approximate sound of B that is being blended, and the vowel portion of B will be cut off, and instead you will say the vowel that comes after B, depending on word you're forming. These blocks show what is happening when you say this. The bumps on the block represent the vowel portion when you try to say appear B in isolation, but say a bit of the vowel at the end. When you put the sound together in a word, the vowel part is removed, just like the block's bumps are hidden when they are put together. Oh, I love building with blocks. The letters M and N, and also L and R at the beginning, can be extended without adding a vowel sound, but they are typically said for a longer length when said in isolation than when put together to make a word. 
This picture shows what happens when m and e are blended together to make me. That's a lot for a small human to understand. That's pretty abstract. Yes, it is more complicated than it seems at first glance. And it does take a lot of repetition and modeling for some small humans. But there are ways to make it fun. I like fun. I spin in circles. I like ideas to make things fun. You have to find fun when you're doing the same thing over and over and over. A fun way to learn to blend is to run a small toy race car or a small plastic animal over letters, blending each sound and then saying the word as the car or animal crosses each sound. R, A, N, RAN. You can use any letters you have on hand or make your own. Use letters written on index card or letter game tiles or magnetic letters. You can also use 40L's letter cards. This is a few of these cards spelling out the word mad. That does look fun. That dino doesn't look very mad, though. No, he's not mad. He is a little bit hungry, though. I'm glad I'm too big to eat, even if I'm not big enough to be a planet. Back to fun blending ideas. You can make page-sized letters. Jumping from letter to letter while saying each sound. Jumping quicker and quicker and quicker while saying the sounds quicker and quicker and quicker to blend the word. j a m p j a m p Jump! Wow, I wish I could do that. But you've got other skills. And you're still everyone's favorite stellar object, even if you're not a planet. You learn blending quicker than any human I know. Blending is a developmental skill that may take some time and explanation and modeling to click. If the spell is not clicking, go back to oral blending and work on spelling. Many small humans can actually spell simple short words before they are able to master, master the skill of blending. Reading and spelling seem very similar. Yes, they are like two sides of the same coin. Spelling helps to reinforce the left to right direction of reading and spelling. You can teach that letter sounds are used to read a word, letter names to spell a word. That makes sense. Syllables and two letter words are also easier to learn to blend than three letter words. You can work on the syllables in Webster's Speller. Oh yes. Tell them to watch our multi-syllable phonics videos, especially Webster, The Secret Power of Schwa. I really like that one. I will. I'll link them at the end. Syllables are more powerful than letter sounds. They're the true atoms of reading instruction. Because letter sounds are actually letter sound approximations, blending is harder to learn than spelling and is a developmental spell skill that takes both practice and understanding of how these approximations blend together to make a word. Here is a quick look at how syllables combine better to make words than letter sound approximations. Are those sound waves? Yes. Cool. I've seen a few floating by me out here. You can't see sound waves. Remember, I'm a planetoid. I have some powers that humans don't. I can see sound waves. I have planetoid powers. Some small humans pick up phonemic awareness and blending apparently out of the blue, but it is a skill that is not innate. Some can learn it from clues picked up from the phonetic nature of language and their observations of the language in their environment. Most small humans can learn to blend by age five, and some can learn at three or four but it may take a lot of practice and modeling and explanation, even for a five or six year old. Practice makes perfect. Yes, but practicing with some methods makes it easier to learn blending. We'll look at a few of them here now. That looks fun. They are fun little books. The IC Sam method focuses on left to right blending and starting with a notched card to focus on sounding out one sound at a time from left to right. A follow on study of this method, looking at the students in high school, found that it reduced illiteracy and was even more powerful for minority students, poor students, and students whose first language was not English. Fun and fact based, even better. There are other proven methods that work too. Blend Phonics is a free good beginning phonics program that is available from Don Potter.
Both IC Sim and Blend Phonics go up to about a first grade level, but they're a very good foundation. Word Mastery is also free from Don Potter and goes up to a third grade level. Word Mastery is a good program to use if your student is having trouble learning to blend because it starts with the easiest letters to blend. Phonics Pathways is also a good method. It's not free, but it's relatively inexpensive and also most libraries have it. Webster Speller is a good follow-on for any of these programs. It teaches phonics to a 12th grade level. I remember that from our Webster video. He was one smart dude. But are we almost done yet? Yes, we are. Just one last thing, but it is very important. The most important thing to do when teaching reading and blending is to make sure you don't teach sight words as holes. They can cause a lot of damage. I've remediated hundreds of remedial students who've had a lot of guessing problems and other problems from learning sight words as holes. Is that why I had to star in so many sight word movies? Yes, and I have more planned too. It's very important. They can watch our sight word videos and go to the sight word page linked in the video description to find out why and how to teach all but five of the most commonly taught dolt sight words and a hundred fry instant words with phonics. We'll see you back soon. Hopefully I won't get edged out by a zebra or a panda here. Don't worry, you're safe. While those animals are cute, people like Pluto. Phew, that's a relief.